Hello, this is Eric Check, owner of the Ananda Apothecary, coming to you from the Ananda Apothecary, uh, where we import essential oils from around the world uh, and extracts your quality testing and get all these oils out to you. Uh, today, I wanted to talk to you about two of the specials we have going on. Um, one is a CO2 sampler set, and then the other is a 20% off sale on all our aged essential oils. Uh, first to the CO2s. So uh, many of you might not be familiar uh, what the difference is between a CO2 extract and a steam distilled essential oil. Technically an essential oil is in fact steam distilled or cold pressed from the rind of the fruit. Um, a CO2 extract is called an extract only, not really an essential oil, but it's again just technicalities. Uh, the way that an essential oil is made is that steam is passed through the plant material, the steam is captured, uh, the, when it's cooled it becomes a liquid and floating on top of that steam is the essential oil so they separate the two and send us uh, the oil on top. Um, a CO2 extract is made in a similar manner using CO2 instead of steam and or water so the CO2 once it's cooled and pressurized high enough cooled to a low enough temperature and then pressurized to a significant PSI it becomes liquid this liquid is passed through the plant material and at the end the uh, the pressure is released the carbon dioxide goes back to chambers where they store it for the next round of processing um, and the oil that is left over is the essential oil or actual CO2 extract um, CO2 extraction is a wonderful way uh, to get um, oils from certain plants. Certain plants are only available via CO2 extracts. Uh, one of them here in our sampler set is rosehip seed. Um, many of you might know as rosehip seed carrier oil is a fantastic oil for the skin. Truly rich in omega essential uh, fatty acids. Um, the CO2 uh, extract also has um, a high amount of essential fats in it as well including a, truly concentrated amount of the phytonutrients so you'll see that it's actually a much darker red than you'll often see with just uh, a cold pressed rosehip seed carrier oil this is from the whole rosehip fruit itself um, next we have uh, both ginger and turmeric uh, spice oils tend to be really um, uh, made well with the co2 extracts they attain retain a little more fullness of body you could really tell the the fruity the entire spice um, and it, they're a little richer as co2 extracts uh, we also have a frankincense uh, co2 extract which frankincense was one of the first co2 extracts to be accepted by the aromatherapy uh, community as potentially um, to have greater therapeutic properties than its steam distilled cousin. Now this isn't true with all essential oils or, and or steam distilled um, oils, extracts. Uh, it's not that one is always better than the other. Um, where there are differences, we offer both. Uh, but where we think there's one better than the other, we'll offer the one that we think is better. So you could browse our site for that. Um, and then a incredible spikenard CO2. So that is the finest spikenard I've ever smelled. Um, whether or not you're uh, into spikenard, spikenard has just incredible grounding, um, really high vibe, spiritual energetics. And uh, that is by far my favorite spikenard. What happens in CO2 distillation is they tend to bring in, the, the process brings in more of the larger molecules that are fat friendly that than steam distillation. So you get a little broader spectrum in what you're smelling and a little broader spectrum of what you're seeing on the GCMS reports. So uh, I believe it's for uh, any order over $59, you can receive this sampler set and there's enough oil in each of these to make a significant amount of blends actually. Um, so it's, it's really worthwhile. On to the aged essential oils. Why would you want to age an essential oil? We now offer 10 aged essential oils and it turns out that aging uh, essential oils is kind of like wine. Some oils should be fresh uh, and some oils actually do better with age. Two of the ones that I'll point out today, uh, what, if you ever are searching for an aged essential oil, you might find an aged patchouli. An aged patchouli gets this a little bit of musty aroma to it. It's like a damp basement. It reminds me of my childhood 
growing up back east. Um, but patchouli lovers, really, they smell this and they're like, oh my God, that is it. Uh, but if the patchouli is, is fairly freshly distilled, it won't have this extra musty note to it. We've developed a process that is in fact certifiably organic. So oils that come to us as certified organic, um, they go through the aging process here, they retain their certified organic uh, approval. Um, the uh, patchouli doesn't happen to be one of those, but um, it is just simply a wonderful oil. Uh, we introduced these aged essential oils to the uh, Alliance of International Aromatherapists uh, last year at their conference in New Jersey, and they were blown away by the scents. We had many very experienced aromatherapists come up and smell many of these oils. Uh, the cedar wood, um, I was pleased to offer to one of my colleagues. Um, she suggested that that was the best cedar wood she had ever smelled, and she had been a practitioner for over 40 years. Uh, and owns her own store and said that is that is absolutely fantastic. Um, a particular oil that I appreciate for me is the helichrysum. Uh, the helichrysum, um, helichrysum I use more than any other soil, oil in the store. Uh, for every little ache and pain and burn and whatever it might be, helichrysum is always my go-to. And uh, a couple years back we had asked the distiller, hey we're out of helichrysum, could you send it to us immediately? And they did. And when we got it, we smelled it and thought, oh my, what, this is gasoline? What is this? What is this? It, and it turns out that helichrysum needs to be aired out by the distiller before they send it to us um, for at least a decent aroma. This year's helichrysum, by the way, the Corsican helichrysum came to us it, absolutely wonderful. So it's a, it's a, it's a perfect batch. Um, yet we wanted to see what happens if we aged it a little bit. And uh, two things about the aging. So one, the aroma actually did get better. Uh, you can detect the honey notes that's, that are in a really, that are in a perfect helichrysum, in a rare aged helichrysum. It gets this little hint of sweet in it uh, that where people that they're questionable about, about the aroma of helichrysum, they'll really start to like it. It also turns out that aging improves the therapeutic markers of helichrysum uh, and all of the aged oils. So as their aromas improve, their therapeutic properties um, appear at least on paper to improve. So with helichrysum, we looked at the GCMS report and saw an increase in italodiones by a couple percent. And that's not doesn't sound like a huge amount, but if you're starting with only 10 and we move up to 12, that's a big difference. Uh, there's also a significant increase in the curcumines. And so what we've always believed in at the Ananda Apothecary is that the best oils are 100% pure and they're the best smelling oils. Uh, we always choose if we have five samples of this lavender from the same place, uh, which, and they're all testing out pure, which one smells the best? We believe that our bodies are gonna tell us which one are the best for us. And this has actually with the helichrysum, the sandalwood, uh, and the patchouli, uh, we've seen changes in the GCMS reports positively that reflect that they should be even better for you therapeutically. So uh, all our aged, 10 of them now are on sale for 20% off. Uh, along with this free sampler set and you'll see our free blend available on our sales and specials page. Thank you very much for listening and uh, have a great day.